Hi Gemini, welcome to your annual 2023 astrology horoscope forecast. I'm Anisha. Welcome to my channel. I speak everything around astrology and tarot. We're starting the year with two retrogrades. One is your own planet Mercury, which is retrograde in your house of joint finances and resources. And the other one is Mars, which is retrograde in your own house till about January 18th. So we are starting the year on quite a somber, slow, introspective note, which I think is quite a good thing because before we sort of uh, get on our horses and uh, set off into the year, uh, it's a good time to be having a uh, Lots of reflection on the internal journey that we are going to be taking. So Mars is uh, going to be urging you to have a look at your own self as to where it is that you think that changes are required. And Mars, despite being this planet of action, it's a warrior planet. And when it brings about, uh, comes about in sense of self, it can bring about some amount of restlessness, some amount of uh, wanting to move or wanting to um, do things more rather than think. But this is really a time for you to be uh, introspecting about your own sense of self. What is it that you want out of life? Where it is that, how well is it that you relate to the work that you're doing? How it is that you want the world to perceive you? And Mercury, your ruling planet, is going to be there in your house of joint finances and resources, sexuality and transformation. So a lot of focus again on how it is that you share. How graceful are you? How much of and I think both gratitude and grace go together. So how it is that you are in your relationship? How giving are you? And this speaks about our intimate relationship. This doesn't have to do, have to do with our children. It speaks about our other half, our partner. How loving are we? How generous are we of the spirit? This really doesn't again speak about material things. It speaks about your, your own emotional uh, journey, your own emotional um, space of sharing. This is also, this house is also the house of transformation. So wonderful time if there are things which you want to release, which you want to let go of as far as power struggles are concerning, as far as manipulation are concerning, then this is a time that you can change, you can transform because your own healing, Geminians, is going to be coming by literally being I would say not just expecting it, but trying not to control or change your environment or your or your partner. March the 8th, we have Saturn, which is changing signs and it is resonating with Neptune, which is there in Pisces. And it is moving into your house of career, reputation and accolades. So this is a, a, the beginning of uh, this transit. It could be that, you know, you are, uh, you have an increased sense of, uh, you're feeling very sensitive, you know, to where it is that you stand uh, in life or your career or your reputation. And you could be feeling uh, quite uncomfortable. You could be uh, feeling as if you're up for scrutiny, that you're being judged for your work. You know, you could be feeling publicly uh, exposed or, uh, you know, you could feel that, oh, your career is on fire and everybody is judging you and thinking. You could also feel burdened by your uh, responsibilities. And this uh, discomfort only comes uh, as, a, uh, as a result of a rush of reality into the matters of this specific house and uh, if you know if the if, you, if you're really uncomfortable about it and you're feeling that oh you're really uh, everyone is judging you then you really need to be looking at your own self uh, image of uh, of you in your own head and this has very little geminians to do with uh, an external judgment. This has to do with the pressure that you seem to have created for yourself in your own head. So transits, uh, Saturn's transit over here, uh, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's actually freeing you. Ironically, it, it's freeing you in a way by letting you know your limitations. It's letting you know that uh, exactly this is what your work is, this is what you can deliver or this is what your limitations are and you should not push yourself more or you should not drive yourself hard 
just by uh, feeling and thinking that you know you're under constant scrutiny or people are judging you or talking about you and and so on and so forth by the time that saturn leaves you in the next uh, 3 years you know you would know exactly where you stand in the world and you would know um you know how uh, you have limited your own achievements whether it is out of fear or whether it is out of i would say mostly fear only uh, or or it is uh, you know out of being too critical of your own self so you are being asked to be gentle on your own self evaluation gemini's and um, it, it it's a time wherein that uh, i would say that approximately 14 years before this uh, transit you know that that was again the saturnian lesson that was there in the house of home which is exactly opposite so we have the 10th house over here on the top and we have the fourth house over here at the bottom which are uh, exactly opposite to each other so uh, 14 years back we had uh, learned the saturnian lesson of building a very strong foundation within ourselves so this is a time we need to be building a strong foundation as far as your professional or your public life is concerned uh, you could feel that you're in the spotlight and uh, you know anything that you have created or worked on that could come up for inspection as well uh, so also you could find find yourself that um, you know if you were to look at yourself 14 years back as to where you were maybe emotionally you could find yourself that you know if the home foundations weren't that strong you could find yourself over there and you could find you know um, maybe this is a time where you are being reminded to have a um, a, a better grip on your own self your own inner strength uh as well and this transit if it happens for you if you're uh, still early in your career if you're a young adult then it's a time that you're just simply being asked to face your duties as a career person it's nothing more you know you're just getting used to the rigmarole of that oh i you know there's work there's expectations i need to deliver there's office politics and at times i come up for scrutiny and it's just a part of the professional life and you just maybe getting a sense of that so uh the focus actually of this house is not as much as where we are going but the more focus is where we are standing as of now it's a time where you will be working very hard uh you will be uh you know taking your fair share of responsibilities and duties and uh, saturn when he, he leaves this house he always leaves a reward so don't shy away from rolling up your sleeves and working hard gemini's however as saturn moves through the house you will start to feel more secure you will recognize what it is that you have accomplished and what it is that you need to accomplish on march the 23rd we have the uh, most planetary talked about of the topic of the decade that is pluto uh, changing signs and pluto is moving into your house of joint finances and resources and uh, it's uh, it has been there and it's now looking into your house of long distance travel it is the house of uh, deepening of spirituality and expansion of the mind so uh, you can expect when pluto and pluto has started ruling now by the time that 2023 comes to an end pluto would have completely ruled into this house of long distance travel uh, and uh, spiritual journey so you can expect drastic uh, changes as far as your philosophical uh, belief system is concerned as far as your religious and cultural outlook is concerned and it can be that either there is a direct experience either you experience it at home or maybe that you'll find that you know you just intuitive and you just gradually drawn to these things and they can uh, these experiences can uh, provoke a personal confrontation with your internal uh, spiritual reality as well so when uh, pluto transits this specific house it can also be that uh, some of you will get financial aid or government scholarships for uh, higher education and uh, they can be travel possibilities which are related to business with uh, foreigners or in distant lands or even introduction of a new uh, scientific technologies in other countries as well and uh, for those of you who are in depending again as to how pluto is placed for you if it's forming a difficult aspect with other planets while transiting it can be that uh, your point of view with respect to education culture philosophy and religion uh, that can border on almost being fanatical 
and in extreme cases it also speaks about you know being involved in foreign wars pluto always tends to uh, produce obsessions and uh, you know during this time it can be that your beliefs can help you uh, convince others of what you have learned and remember uh, that they also uh, they also must have the opportunity to uh, preserve their own point of view you know you can't just be getting into one big thing about no everyone must believe what it is that i believe in and you know my way is the right way so try and have a moderation as far as your philosophies your beliefs your uh, cultural spiritual religious beliefs are there because all of them will get impacted by pluto and importantly it's quite all right to you know follow a certain um, path a certain religion as long as you're not forcing others people whom you live with you're not sort of dragging them and saying no even i you know believe this so should you on april the 20th we have a solar eclipse that is set in your house of friendships and it is resonating with jupiter beautiful beautiful uh, aspect a lot of networking maybe uh, some of you are making new friends you're expanding your network May 5th, we have a lunar eclipse, which is there in your house of home. It can be that you're shifting homes during this time, Geminians. Maybe you are renting, buying, leasing. In some cases, uh, it concerns your mother. Maybe there are some conversations. Maybe your parents or your mother is visiting you. Maybe you are going and visiting or you're worried or concerned about your mother. On May 17th, we have Jupiter, which is resonating with uh, Uranus in your house of behind the scenes. And this, again, is a very uh, fortunate uh, aspect because, uh, again, Jupiter is going to be encouraging you to recharge your emotional batteries. It's a wonderful time of researching, of maybe uh, learning about a new uh, technology, learning about a new language of a new faith, about deepening your spirituality. Wonderful time to be spending time with the nature as well. Uh, uh, some of you could get quite attracted to the unusual, to the occult as well. On June 12th, we have Pluto that is moving back into your house of uh, long distance travel briefly. And on October 14th, we have a solar eclipse, which is there in your house of love, romance, creativity and children. So it can be that uh, for some of you, you start a new relationship. For those of you who are in a relationship, this speaks about a... Uh, um, a kind of a deepening of commitment of sorts, a uh, wonderful time for children, wonderful time to be spending time for children, wonderful time to be letting your own inner child out as well, great time for publishing, great time to be spending that quality time with your children as well. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that all year round, we have the retrograde, that is Mercury retrograde energies, which are there in the earth sign. So, it's a very earthy, practical energy. So all the ideas and visions, all of them can be put to a practical use. You know, this, you know, even though you're an airy sign, Geminian, it's not a year to be just keep debating and arguing and uh, sort of, con uh, I wouldn't say confronting really, but it's not a time to be staying in your head. It's a time of implementation. You need to be implementing things. And on October 28th, we have a lunar eclipse that is there in your house, which is behind the scene. So something comes to an end, something reaches a fruition, maybe you're at peace with something, uh, you know, uh, you finally either, um, uh, you know, accept your past or either you are releasing something which has been there in your mind. A wonderful time to be seeking therapy again. If there are things from the past that still bother you, good time to be getting your, uh, you know, doing the spring clean uh, of your mind as well. Um, fabulous year for transformation, Geminians. Fabulous year for growth, for learning, personal development. The only thing is that you need to be open to change. You need to be fearless. You need to be, um, I would say, uh, more compassionate to yourself. Be kind. Stop being hard on yourself. And also, I would say specifically on your partners because Pluto being over there, while it's okay to raise the bar on ourselves, I think it's a little unfair to keep expecting or keep, um, I would say, uh, pushing our partners to uh, have the similar, you know, ideologies or faith or, you know, or whatever it is that we feel very strongly about. 
It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Geminians. I wish you a fabulous 2023. I'll see you again soon. And thank you so much for watching.